Nina and her husband Harry got a good deal on the house. It was a charming bone-colored Cape Cod that seemed to have an agreement with the elements. All over it was tilted and withered, but also sturdy, petrified almost. They never met the owner. He's in Florida now, the realtor said unprompted, twice during the closing. She said it in a plain, firm way that Nina and her husband did not question. She said it like Florida meant Mars or hell. On the first night in the house, Nina dreamed of the owner. He sat in a canvas chair in the desert. To his left was a stunted palm tree. To his right, a beach ball that didn't roll away. He gazed out over an expanse of red sand. He wore a gas mask, but Nina could still hear what he said. I left you something. Did you find it? Nina woke with a jolt. Beside her, Harry breathed serenely. She rose and went into the bathroom and opened the medicine cabinet. She wanted an aspirin, but all she found was a Band-Aid tin, the vintage metal kind. And inside of that, a single white bead. Nina inspected the bead. It was the size of a large pea with a tidy, drilled hole. She put the bead back into the tin and the tin back into the cabinet. She drank from the faucet. When she returned to bed, she could not sleep. She kept seeing the gas mask, the stunted palm. She kept trying to move the beach ball with her thoughts. In the morning, while Nina stood in front of the toaster, Harry came up behind her and kissed the nape of her neck. When she turned around, he wasn't there. Harry, she called. Was that you? Harry didn't answer. Even when she called out again, Nina stood frowning until her toast popped up. In that short time, to her surprise, she was able to recall every argument she and Harry had ever had. There had been problems with money and romance, fertility and drinking. Right after they'd first married, there had also been a woman. A neighbor named Pearl, who had visited three or four times a week with something from her garden. Profane-looking cucumbers, swollen purple tomatoes, fistfuls of fragrant basil. She was good-natured about everything and everyone. There was always a ladybug in her hair. Nina had never seen Harry so happy. He accepted everything Pearl brought without once looking down at what Pearl brought. You look at her too much, Nina had said. Maybe you could learn a thing or two, Harry had said back. Nina hadn't thought of Pearl in a long time. She was filled with sudden sadness. She left the toast in the toaster to grow stale. She went back to the bedroom and curled on the bed. This time, when she dreamed of the owner, he had two gas masks. One on his face, and one that he held out for Nina. The beach ball was still in the same place. The palm tree was nearly dead. When Nina woke up, she discovered two more white beads on the floor, side by side. Every day, in an unexpected place, Nina found another bead. She found one in the lint screen of the dryer, one in the soil of a cactus she repotted, one at the bottom of a bowl of tomato soup. One day, she coughed a single cough, and a bead appeared on her tongue. Nina kept all the beads. She stored them in the Band-Aid tin. Sometimes she shook the tin to hear the noise it made. Nina and Harry weren't happy in the new house. They bickered all the time. The only thing that brought Nina hope were the beads and the dreams, though neither of those made any real sense to her. She slept excessively. Harry came home later and later in the evening smelling of beer, cigars, perfume. When he slept, he no longer breathed serenely. Instead, he snored, causing Nina's dreams to take an urgent turn. There was a loud, new factory in the desert, churning out clouds of navy smoke. And she and the owner would sit in his canvas chairs, wearing gas masks, looking at it. "'What are they making?' she'd ask him. "'It's not what you think,' he'd say." Then Nina would wake up and drink from the faucet and discover another bead, maybe pressed into the soft pink meat of her heel, maybe near the sink drain in the tiny groove 
that kept it from drowning. When Nina had forty beads, she spread them on the kitchen table after Harry had gone to work. She put twenty in one row, then twenty in a row below it. She pretended they were teeth. While she arranged the beads, someone came and kissed her on the nape of her neck. But this time she did not turn to see who it was. That night, Harry was the latest he had ever been. "'Where have you been?' Nina asked. "'It's not what you think,' he said. Harry stayed at the foot of the bed. Nina felt her hands begin to shake. "'I don't like this house,' she said. "'I wish we'd never bought it.' Harry shook his head. "'I knew this would happen.' Nina's eyes filled with tears. She lay back in bed. She heard Harry leave the room, and then the house. Then she let herself cry until she was there, in the desert, with the owner, reaching out for the gas mask and putting it on. "'What happened to the palm tree?' Nina asked. "'It died,' said the owner. "'And the beach ball?' "'It rolled away.' Nina didn't want to sit in the canvas chair. "'Let's walk to the factory,' she said. "'Let's see what they make.' The owner said nothing, but he got up, and off they went across the red sand together. The factory was larger and louder than life, and made of black glass. When they got up to it, Nina pressed her face against it but couldn't see inside. All she could see was her own reflection, her face in its gas mask, and the owner standing behind her, his face in his. "'Look what I have,' he said. He held up something small and square and gave it a shake. Nina Fro was petrified. She watched as the owner opened the tin and brought out the beads. All forty were now on a string, and he placed them around her neck, stopping to kiss her nape before he fastened them. Nina placed one palm on the factory's black glass, the other at the hollow of her throat. As the necklace grew tighter, the factory grew louder. She thought to call for Harry, but she could not speak, could not breathe. She could only see the image of her masked face and that of the owners looking back at her. Her vision began to dim, but not before she saw a final bead, a red one, on the lens of the owner's mask, moving gently. A ladybug. <laughs> And now, a word from our sponsor. Do you like apples? Yeah. yeah. Venitas. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Venitas is a premium gaming peripheral brand geared toward developing high performance products. We're currently working toward creating new, exciting, and unique products not currently found on the market. With quality to match its sleek and beautiful design, I can honestly say that my Venitas mouse is the best that I've ever owned, and I'm looking forward to expanding my collection of Venitas products. Venitas ships internationally with extremely low international shipping costs, and shipping is free to the US and Canada. Your products will arrive quickly and carefully packaged with most orders arriving within seven to 10 business days. If you're looking to upgrade your setup in an affordable way without substituting looks, Venitas is an optimal choice. And when you use code PRESSSTARTMOM at checkout, Venitas is offering a 10% discount on your order. You'll be doing mom a solid, and you'll be doing yourself a solid. Everyone wins. Thank you so much to Venitas for sponsoring this video. Can you see me? Hello? Can you find me? I'm here. Behind you, look. Behind you. I'm behind you. I am right behind you. 
Don't be scared. I just want to play a game with you. Hey, don't you run away. Please stay. <laughs> Wincy wincy spider went up the water spout Down came the rain and washed the spider out Out came the sun and dried up all the rain So wincy wincy spider went up the spout again <laughs>